everyone. Welcome to Fine Scale Modeler Weekly. We've got a lot on this week, so let's get started with a kit that's going to make a great display piece. From Takam, it's a 172nd scale Japanese carrier Akagi deck and island. Out of the box, this kit will represent the Akagi as it appeared on the morning of December 7th, 1941. The deck section is about 14 inches long and slightly less than 12 inches wide. With the island in place, it leaves room for a couple of zeros or maybe one and a kate or vow. The sturdy piece has good plank detail and tie downs top side and bracing underneath to keep it flat. Predictably, most of the parts go into the island with open portholes and individual deck sections, some with molded splinter shields, others without. The bridge area builds from separate wall panels with molded rivets and the windows are provided in clear plastic, which also fills the portholes. The island is topped by a gun director and the rolled futon mattresses lashed to the island as extra protection are provided. Small parts such as lanterns, signal lights, binoculars and guns, railings and handrails, plumbing and stairs, the mast and other equipment is finely molded. A small photo etched brass fret supplies adjustment wheels with a few other bits and bobs. The decals and color diagrams show the carrier as it appeared when it launched the attack on Pearl Harbor, including deck stripes, dials, roster, and maps of Oahu. This terrific looking kit will make a great display. All you need to supply is some aircraft and the crew. Next up, we go big. With Italeri's 112th scale Lancia Delta HF Integrale 16 valve. This kit of the rally car includes markings and features to model one of the two martini cars at the San Remo race in 1989. The real thing isn't especially big, but in 112th scale, the model will be more than a foot long. The body shell has good lines and detail, and the doors, hood, hatchback, roof hatch, and bumpers are separate and posable. The underbody is nicely molded and doubles as the floor for the interior. For that, you get a pair of racing bucket seats and driver controls, fuel cell, fire extinguisher, and other tanks. The dash features a separate top and gets photo etched metal and decal details. All of that is wrapped in a multi-part roll cage and there are separate inner door panels. Red ribbon is supplied for the seat belts with photo etched metal buckles. The fret also has floor mats, visors, dash details, grills, and more. The 1,995 cubic centimeter four-cylinder engine is well replicated with the block, head transmission and turbocharger, radiator and more that connect to the front differential, exhaust and drive shaft for the rear axle. Several gauges of rubber tubing are provided to plumb and wire the engine. Suspension elements including working shocks wrapped with real springs and brakes that link to nicely molded wheels and vinyl Michelin tires. The CV boots are also supplied as vinyl. For the front grille, a chrome plated insert is supplied. The mirrors and light bezels are also plated. Each window is a separate clear, very thin part and there are lights and instrument covers on the parts tree. Two large decal sheets are included in the kit. One covers the seats and interior as well as Kevlar covering for some components. The other has all the Lancia Martini team livery including sponsor titles and contingencies. Alternate numbers allow for either of the two cars raced at the 1999 San Remo Rally. There's a ton of detail and features here. If you dig rally cars, you'll want this. Vroom. It makes sense that Chinese manufacturer Hobby Boss would bring us kits of Chinese aircraft. The latest is this 1-144th scale Shanxi Y9 transport. Comparable to the C-130 and A-400, the Y9 can carry 25 to 30 tons of cargo or 106 paratroopers. It entered service in the Chinese Air Force in 2012. Marked with fine recessed panel lines, the fuselage halves are abbreviated because the entire nose is clear. The upper half of the high set wing is full span, setting the slight anhedral. I really like that the engines have one piece fronts and exhausts, eliminating awkward filling. Also cool, the delicate six blade props are packed in a separate box. Inside is the floor and ceiling of the cargo compartment and a cockpit with seats and controls. The rear ramp can be posed open to show the area. Photo etch brass supplies control yokes and blade antennas. Decals and color diagrams show a single marking option, a People's Liberation Army Air Force transport in gray and white camo. Despite its size and relative simplicity, there's quite a bit of detail in this kit. Edward has released several versions of its terrific 148th scale P-51 Mustang kit. 
Yeah, and you can see our video preview and read our workbench review of the initial offering at the links in the description, which should be right down there. The latest offering is this limited edition under the Mighty 8th label with markings for 66th Fighter Wing aircraft. Ten Mustangs are featured on the decal sheets. They include Hua Corps My Gal Sal, flown by Lieutenant Billy Clemens with the 38th Fighter Squadron. The Millie G, flown by Major Edward Giller of the 343rd Fighter Squadron. Captain Richard Hewitt's Big Dick from the 82nd Fighter Squadron. The well-known Big Beautiful Doll, flown by Ace Lieutenant Colonel John Landers, CO of the 78th Fighter Group. Mary Beth, flown by Captain Kirk Everson from the 504th Fighter Squadron. A 350th Fighter Squadron Mustang named Janie, flown by Captain William Price. Double Trouble 2, flown by 352nd Fighter Squadron Pilot Lieutenant William Bailey. Major Leonard Carson's 362nd Fighter Squadron Mustang, Nuki Buki 3. Another well-known P-51, Old Crow, flown by Ace Captain Clarence Bud Anderson. And last, but not least, Glamorous Glen 3, flown by Captain Chuck Yeager. With that many colorful options, you may want to get a few more Mustang kits. Darn skippy. Before we check in with Tim to see what trouble he's getting into with tools, we thought we should mention that Tacom has released limited editions of its headsers. You can see the review of the initial release at the link in the description. Now these look exactly the same as those original kits, except for the limited edition labeling and an X after the kit numbers. The difference is these kits omit the interiors featured in the initial releases. Which is great if you want to build a Yogg Panzer 38T buttoned up. Look for reviews of the Akagi Carrier Deck and Lancia at finescale.com. A great place to go for all kinds of modeling info, including how-to stories, snapshots, videos, reviews, galleries, and so much more. Finescale Modeler Weekly is brought to you by HobbyZone USA, your source for hobby storage solutions, hard-to-find hobby tools, and aftermarket modeling needs. You guys know I'm a fan of organization, and Charlie's Plastic Models.com, they have sent us some of their 3D printed tool caddies and their finishing caddies. And we thought we would take a look at those and let you know what we think of them. First up, the tool caddies. Before we get too far along, I want to let you know that CPM has examples of how to set up these caddies on its website. Just go there if you're wondering and take a look. It shouldn't be too dissimilar to what you're going to see here right now. Now, starting off with the tool caddy, like I told you before, there are two different versions of their tool caddy, and the big difference is this. This one over here that we've filled up has an integrated knife holder, and this one does not. So what does that mean for design? What that means is, right here on the other version is where that knife holder would be. This space extends all the way back to this back side, and then otherwise it's pretty much identical in design. What's clear about both versions of the tool caddy is that CPM has thought about organization. There are small spots right here for smaller tools that you might have, like toothpicks or micro brushes, slightly larger places for you to put things like cotton swabs, tweezers, and narrow sanding sticks. In the back, there's space for even larger tools, like a pin vise, nips, a razor saw, or even more sanding sticks. Of course, on this version, there is the spot for the knife. We're gonna come back to that. But then down here along the front, we all are familiar with these square bottles from, from Tamiya and Mr. Hobby, so there's, it's perfectly placed and sized to house this square bottle of glue. This square over here, you'll notice that there's not a little gate here that holds these parts in like there is on that bottle there. That's a great space for either these testers or Revell liquid cement bottles. You can actually squeeze two of those in there. Now I have put a bottle of Plastruct over here in this area just to see if it would fit, and it does. Barely, um, but what you could do is use this area for a couple of small bottles of super glue and they'd fit in there just fine. Then along the back here, there's this wall and you know, you can easily put a couple of clamps on there. 
keep them um, within reach too. So it does work and it does do its job as an organizer. The one thing that I'm a little bit skeptical about and why this version of the organizer wouldn't necessarily work for me is this, this integrated knife section here for a couple of reasons. One, unless you've got a cap on your knife, putting it in that way, that's just asking for trouble. And then again, unless you have a cap on your knife, placing it in that way, well, you're just putting the tip of the knife blade down into the bottom of this caddy, and that's gonna dull it, it's gonna bend it. Again, if you have a knife that has a cap on it, then that's great, this knife doesn't. And if your favorite knife doesn't have a cap, well, you're asking to get sliced. So, I would probably opt for the version that doesn't have the integrated knife holder. The other thing that I'm not particularly thrilled about with this design is that even though there is this wider area in the back here, if you have a larger set of nips like what these are, I'm not comfortable with going ahead and closing those to make sure that they fit into that organizer like that. Um, so while I can use it to hold the snips, you know, and keep them nearby, I'm also, I have to make sure that this handle back here is beyond the rear side of the caddy. So the caddy's not going to actually sit flush up against the wall or a backsplash or something that you might have on your workbench. Now, if that's not a big deal to you, then no problem. Or if you have a smaller, a smaller set of snips, then obviously it's not a problem for you there either. But those are the two of the things that really kind of stand out to me. I like I say, would probably opt for this one. I just wish that with this design, this area went all the way back like it did with the, the one with the integrated knife holder. And then they just maybe widen these or shift these, these walls back here um, over just to give you a little bit more space, maybe even enough space to hold those larger snips. Moving on to the finishing caddies, Again, we've got two different versions. Let's start with the one that we've put tools into. This one has a place for microscales, microset, and microsol. It has two areas for, again, those square bottles. Now, in this case, uh, we just put a bottle of Mr. Mark Softer in there from Mr. Hobby, but if you're using the Mr. Hobby decal setting solution, or Tamiya's decal setting solutions, those are gonna both fit right in there. If you're concentrating on using Microset and Microsol, then you could swap these out and use these areas instead to hold Tamiya panel line accent colors. Those will work just as well. And then over here, they've got a space for Solvacet. The, the newer version of Solvacet in this round cylindrical bottle rather than my version of Solvacet that has still a square bottle to it. That one won't fit in here, but you can fit that in there. Then along the back, there are some just spaces for other tools. We have some round spaces for large handled brushes, smaller spaces for narrow handled brushes, and then a variety of square spaces where we've put tweezers. You can put other tools in there that you might need like cotton swabs or toothpicks or micro brushes, anything that you might need while you're doing your finishing on your model. If we take a look at the other version of the Caddy, the first thing that I wanna show you is that they are not the same because this version eliminates the Microset and Microsol spaces. So it's a little bit shorter, not quite as long as the other version. And because you lose that space, then they've had to do some redesign of this back wall. So you get more spaces for the small brushes, uh, one fewer space for a large handled brush, and then these squares here get a bit smaller behind the Solvacet. Um, you also, this, these three squares go away and you get this sort of large 
rectangle spot. So just a little bit different in design than the one that has the microset and microsol space. For me, this one would be the way to go because as Aaron and I have discussed in past videos, both of us have dumped these bottles over a number of times. We've also, <laughs> well, not Aaron so much as me, we've confused these two in the past. So, you know, being able to organize it so that the micro set is up front, you use that one first, and then the microsol is behind it, that's pretty useful too. So for me, this would be the way to go, but that doesn't necessarily mean it would be the way to go for you. What do I think about these caddies? Earlier I said, I like organization. And I wanna help you guys be organized and efficient at the workbench too. There are a couple of things that maybe I wouldn't use or I would like to see changed, like the knife holder or a bit of a better space for snips. But overall, I think that these caddies give you the place, the areas to store those tools that you most commonly use either for building or for finishing. Now, at my workbench, I've got a lot of tools. So would these caddies necessarily make sense for me? Mm, maybe not. However, if you have a smaller area, your workstation isn't really big, or maybe you are really concentrated in the number of tools that you use, these caddies could be very useful for you. Um, and frankly, they'd help you get your tools out of those old nasty mugs that you've got on your workbench right now. Are you interested in the best models of the year? If you are, that's great, and we have you covered because Contest Cars 2023 is available now with photos and captions of more than 500 lowriders, gassers, dragsters, muscle cars, pickups, and more. You're going to see not only the winners, but just the best models that are out there. You can order your copy today from KalmbachHobbyStore.com or go to your local hobby store, bookstore, or a newsstand and pick it up there. If they don't have it, ask them to order it or order it direct from us. Also coming from Fine Scale Modeler is our 100 page special issue paint award winning figures. Inside you will find projects from well known figure modelers like Joe Hudson, Brian Wildfong, Matt Mrozek, and many more and it will be available in March. However, you can pre-order it now on KalmbachHobbyStore.com. And don't forget, you can subscribe to Fine Scale Modeler Magazine, where you'll get six issues a year full of how-to stories from some of the best modelers around the world and access to subscriber-only content on FineScale.com. Go to this link to subscribe and you'll get a special introductory offer for our YouTube viewers. You know, that tool caddy, it offers you know, a nice compact organizational footprint and it's 10 bucks. Yeah, that's hard to beat. That's I mean, Some of those things will run you 20, 30, $40 to get some sort of organization at your workbench. Yeah. And they're not the biggest things in the world, but if you have a few tools that you wanna keep just at hand, it's a perfect way to do it. Buying a mug to sit on your workbench to throw everything in would cost more than buying one of those caddies. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> well, as you can see from our getup. Festive, we're festive. <laughs> Is that what we are? I think so. Are we festive? <laughs> I don't know if you think we're festive or not, but. Or we, goofy, festive, goofy. goofy. <laughs> We are not going to be here next week. We are taking the week between Christmas and New Year's off. Yep. To do what? Relax a little bit. Okay, all right, yeah. We I mean, you know, it's, it's that time of year. We ain't gonna be here. I'm gonna be at my workbench, that's where I'm gonna be. There you go, and I have, I have plenty of work to do. Yeah, well, how, on a couple how are those of horses going? You be quiet about <laughs> my horses. Anyway, so yeah. we are not going to be here, however, so. There is no video on Friday, December 29th. Right. Go do your other things. Yes. Enjoy whatever it is that you're gonna be at the workbench. Right. But the following week, the following Friday, we will be back. Right, we'll be back next year. Next year. 
see you in 2024. So until then, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. And we will see you in 2024. Happy modeling. Bye, everyone. <laughs>